Welcome to the CTA Foundation's CES interview series. My name is Steve Ewell, and I'm Executive Director of the Consumer Technology Association Foundation. I'm pleased to be joined today by Christina Kaufman, CEO of the Code of Support Foundation. Welcome, Christy. Glad to have you here. Thank you so much, Steve. Really appreciate the opportunity and so excited to be not just a, a grantee, but a member of CTA. I think you're, we're our first nonprofit member, and so we're we're happy to be engaged with you guys in lots of different ways. Absolutely, and we're, we're so happy to have you a member of the association as well as a, a grant recipient of the, the CTA Foundation. Um, first off though, for you know, the audience that may not be aware of the Code of Support Foundation or the, the work, the program that you run, Patriot Link, can you share some of that work that you do? Yeah, absolutely. So I founded Code of Support Foundation with General Alan Salisbury about 10 years ago. Uh, and, and I had some personal experience as an army wife of what it was like to um, you know, live uh, an army life during a war. Uh, my former husband had multiple deployments and I recognized and I saw the impact that was not having just on, not just on the soldiers, but the families as well. And what we discovered is that, that the problem isn't so much that there's not enough support out there, it's this fragmentation of, of effort and trying to find your way through the maze of programs and, 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 uh, um, and research out there is really difficult. So what we did at Code of Support is we created uh, two integrated programs. One is the case coordination program where we have a team of veteran and caregiver peer navigators who have their own experience uh, dealing with some of this stuff and are also trained. Uh, they provide one-on-one -on -one very um, uh, direct support for families who are really at risk for negative outcomes. And in our community, that can be mental health, uh, employment, transportation, legal family unrest. And as we built that program, we recognized it was taking our folks sometimes half of their week just to identify the resources because for a national organization that works across the country. And that's what really drove the development of Patriot Link, uh, which is a technology platform that's been pre-populated with vetted and verified resources to make it really easy for troops, veterans, and families to find exactly when they, what they need when they need it. And so it's really um, transforming the way people are accessing uh, support um, uh, in the military veteran community. And we knew that technology had to be a part of that. Well, that's really incredible because, you know, I see it across the nonprofit uh, spectrum, the, the, the challenge of identifying um, the services that people need and being able to provide that matching. And it's just been uh, you know, so much greater uh, within the, the veteran community, within the active duty community, as well as uh, you know, family caregivers and everyone around them. So um, I really think it's incredible what you've been able to build here and, and create connection. Can you share a little bit about you know, what's the, the user experience? If someone, you know, whether they're active duty veteran, caregiver family um, signs up for Patriot Link, how do they access the system and get uh, access to some of the services? So the first thing is that it's completely free for anybody to use. You can go to patriotlink.org right now, sign up for an account and start searching. So whether you're a veteran caregiver family member, um, we have pledged to keep this platform free to the users um, because we wanna make sure that as many people uh, that need it are using it. So it's really, it's very intuitive. It, it's basically like a very targeted Google, right? Google is one of the, uh, the, the tech giants that we have a partnership with, which is super cool. And they're helping us really with some of the, um, uh, the analytics uh, of, of what we're capturing on the back end. But in terms of the front end, it's really, you know, you can give us some information that will help target your search. Like we've tagged all the different profiles of the programs that we've put in there not just by the services they provide, but eligibility criteria. So you mentioned this is, this is true across the, the nonprofit space. In the military, you know, if you're a certain uh, branch or if you have a certain discharge status or disability, all those things factor into eligibility. So since we've built the system to be able to call up very targeted searches, instead of spending weeks on Google, uh, particularly when you're in crisis, uh, you're able to find exactly what you or your client needs um, really quickly. So we've tried to make it super, super intuitive and easy. You don't need like training to use Patriot Link. It's just a way to find the resources that you need. And then, of course, on the back end of it, 
we are um, collecting all this data, of course, anonymizing and aggregating it so that we're able to see trends across the country in real time. So right now there's a two year lag to get information from the VA about what are the trends and needs that we're seeing. With Patriot Link, once it's widely deployed, we'll be able to see and, and uh, pinpoint target geographic areas that have trends in certain searches and also be able to identify gaps in services in those areas, right? So let's say 80% of searches uh, happening in Austin, Texas are for mental health and only two resources exist there. That's something that will help inform the, the space, um, and not just us, but the entire space and where we need to kind of point uh, funding policy and program decisions. That's uh, amazing data. And uh, I'm sure the audience uh, of which there's many that are uh, very interested in uh, big data and, and how to process and provide that information. But it is, there's so many nonprofits that focus on military and veterans, but it's always been a challenge of creating that, that link and, and knowing uh, where there's a lot of duplication of efforts as well as where there's a lack of coverage for different services. So um, I really think this is critical information uh, and I'm, I'm really impressed with the way that you've been able to pull all this together, um, working with your team as well as some of the, the partners that uh, you mentioned as well. You know, this has been a a challenging year for all of us uh, in many ways. Um, and we've certainly seen um, an increase in demand across all the groups that we're working with. And I know you have as well. Can you talk a little bit about that increase in demand that you've seen and, and how, that you've, how you've been able to kind of uh, meet that demand? Yeah, like all nonprofits, we've seen a huge surge in need, 200% uh, increase in demand for our case coordination search, uh, uh, services. And we've also seen, uh, you know, five times the amount of searches happening in Patriot Link. We had a surge of, I think, five or 7,000 people sign up in March um, for Patriot Link. And so most of what we're seeing is around uh, food insecurity, um, housing challenges, just overall financial. And we're seeing a lot of mental health challenges, particularly in the past couple months. We were very fortunate, and I guess in some ways smart, to have a technology platform and a virtual delivery um, uh, you know, way we uh, deliver services, which was relevant before this and now is necessary. And I think that's one of the things that, that you and I were discussing be before the interview is, you know, it's forcing all of us, uh, nonprofits, government, private sector, to think about how we can leverage technology in a way that allows us to function in what has become pretty much a virtual world. You know, uh, and so I think that that while Patriot Link, we have planned for this before the pandemic, obviously, I think has become more relevant during the pandemic. And and we've actually had some interesting conversations with the DOD and VA. You know, there's a transition process that you go through uh, when, you, when you get out of the military. And we've been saying for years, there needs to be a technology platform that supports transition. And the fact that there isn't one in 2020 is a little insane, right? Now that we're actually, you know, there is no opportunity to put paper in people's hands. I think that they're really looking at um, Patriot Link and other technology platforms as part of the solution to ensure that when you leave the military, you're getting connected to both VA resources, but also community-based resources. Uh, so yeah, like everybody else, we're seeing a huge surge. Um, and fortunately, Patriot Link, with the help of Amazon Web Services, who is also a partner, has risen to the challenge. We've seen no problems in terms of being able to um, have lots of additional users on there. And the more people we have using it, the more people we can help, and the more data that we're going to get to again, inform um, efforts going forward. That's great. And you've mentioned, you know, the, the work that you do with Amazon Web Services, the work that you do with Google and, and other technology companies. Uh, you know, how does this technology really help you scale to meet the, the needs that you're seeing? Uh, in what ways do you use technology? Uh, obviously it's a technology platform, but I'd love to kind of hear, you know, how that technology helps you scale even further. Yeah, as I mentioned in the beginning, when we fit, when we first started Code of Support, because the services that we offer on the case coordination side are very holistic and in-depth, you know, our average client has four to six very distinct needs. 
there is no one organization that can meet all those needs, not even the VA, you know, so where, you know, the VA is really good at healthcare and some benefits, but they're not going to be dealing with transportation and they're not going to be helping you with legal or family issues or whatever. So knowing that in order to provide real wraparound services, we needed a technology platform that enabled us to quickly identify other resources. And I know that, you know, we figured if we needed that, the entire space needed that. Not just veterans and family members who were searching for themselves, but also service providers. Like we have suicide prevention coordinators in the VA using the platform, social workers, obviously, this is a huge um, uh, tool for them because they're the ones who do kind of the most holistic kind of um, approach to uh, quality of life and well-being. Uh, so I think that that it's just, it, it allows us to access information that would otherwise either be unattainable or take a long time um, to get. So I think that for us, that's the, the biggest thing is that we understand that as a nonprofit that has a technology platform, we are a little different. Right. So, you know, there, there's not a lot of nonprofits that have a tech platform. And so what we've really done is, is rely on our partners like CTA um, and other technology giants that really can help us. We understand the requirements. We understand the needs. What's the best way to actually get this done? And that's one of the things that we're so excited about being involved with CTA and is that, you know, our, our co-members can really help us there. Right. I think that there's there's been a little bit of a disconnect between um, the technology sector and, and the veteran support sector, right? And I, I went to Cal, and so I know a lot of people in Silicon Valley. And for years, I've kind of been talking to them about how, how can we work together? Now that we have a technology platform, I think there's a lot of relevancy there because it's not just about funding, which is always great, but it's about expertise that we just don't have. Right. And so being able to combine the efforts of social service organizations and technology companies, I mean, that is transformative. That can change the game. And that's, I think, what we're really looking at doing at Coda Support and with Patriot Link is transforming the way people get the help they need. And as you mentioned, if this works in the veteran sector, it can work anywhere. I mean, I see Patriot Link being able to bring order from chaos in any sector. Right. This is not a problem that's just specific to the veteran sector. We don't have a problem with with a lack of information. There's so much information. Nobody knows what to do. Right. And so I always say in the Vietnam generation, that generation came home and just didn't have access to anything. My generation of military families has a lot but can't navigate through it. Either way, the end state's the same. People don't get what they need. Yeah. Well, I, I appreciate all the work that you're doing to link the, the people with the services that they need. You know, being here at CES, uh, even digitally at CES this year, you know, we're excited to see all the emerging technologies, whether it's the things that are being announced this year, as well as a chance to see, you know, what are some of the things coming down the pike uh, that will be uh, impacting all of us uh, in the coming years. Beyond just the, the technologies that you're using for Code of Support, um, are there certain segments of uh, technology that have you excited uh, coming down the road? Yeah, I mean, the, uh, the machine learning and the AI, I think is super exciting. Um, one of the things that we really like to do is, is be able to see if someone is searching for, let's say, financial services, um, are they also searching for mental health? What, is, what are some of the relationships that we're able to see? And then if we, I, if we uncover those relationships, then we can actively push additional resources to someone who might not actually be searching for those resources because it's not top of mind. If you're in financial distress, all you're looking for is financial help. You're not really thinking about how that's impacting other parts of your life. So I think um, ML uh, AI is a big one for us. I know it's not new, but that is something that we're really um, interested in, in integrating into our capabilities. I also think that we saw this year, aside from the pandemic, um, you know, we've, we've seen a lot of issues with um, access for certain communities. Um, I think that, uh, you know, people of color, uh, people with uh, uh, disabilities, whether that's hearing or, or vision or all the things that make it difficult um, to engage with uh, particularly technology. So any, any uh, ways that we're discovering around technology of how we make our, our services and our platform more accessible and to make sure that we are targeting and making uh, the platform relevant 
to underserved communities, even within the veteran community, there are underserved communities. Um, so I think that's one of the things that we're really interested in, in looking at what's happening at CES. What are those capabilities that we might be able to integrate into our efforts? Well, that's great. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of exciting work going on in many of those areas. Those are all important topics for us as we're having the conversations at CES this year. You know, if people want to learn more about CODA Support Foundation, potentially support your work, uh, where should they go to learn more? Well, since this conversation is about technology, I would definitely send them to codasupport.org, our website. And you could also check out directly patriotlink.org. Again, it's always free. We're on all the social media channels. Um, we really love to highlight our partners. So when we, you know, when we're working with a company uh, or a partner, we're all about um, promoting uh, the work that they're doing generally and the work that they're doing with us. Um, so the basic ways of, of making sure that, uh, that people can reach us. Um, I will tell you that the tale of this pandemic, and I think everybody knows is a long one and it's not just the financial, but the emotional impact that's going to, um, it going to continue. Uh, and so we know that while 2020 was a uh, extraordinary year in a lot of ways, we look at 2020 as being the exact same thing as, as, as having to deal with a continuous surges and the after effects. Like I almost compare it to um, when you come home from war, right? I think a lot of times in the beginning of, you know, 2001, three, four, people were really interested in what was happening with the military, a lot of support. But people don't understand it's when you come home, sometimes is the hardest battle. And I always say war sometimes comes home. And so we have veterans that we work with and that are using um, our technology that are Korea, Vietnam. Like we have 20 million veterans in this country and about a third of them are in some kind of crisis. So we just deeply appreciate anybody that's interested in engaging with us, uh, whether that's financially, we're always obviously looking for funding. We can do that with companies. We can do that with 20 bucks a month from an individual. Um, but I think mostly we understand that this is an all hands on deck solution and that this cannot be solved just by the government, just by nonprofits or just by the private sector. And CODA support really, we see ourselves as that integrator. Let's bring everything to bear, organize it in a way that's navigable and get it done because we can do it. I know we can do it. We have the resources to do it as a country and we just have to figure out a way to get it done. Very well said. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you continue to get that done and just continue to grow uh, the work and support uh, for so many people in need. So thank you so much, Christy, for joining us here today, for sharing the work that you're doing. And I, it's always a pleasure talking to you about all of this. So thank you again for joining. Thank you so much, Dave. And again, huge shout out to CTA and, and the support and the guidance that they've given us over the past couple of years. So, yay. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. And for the audience, if you're interested in learning more about the CTA Foundation, you can go to ctafoundation.tech. Thank you again and have a wonderful CES 2021.